Next up is Ralph Gorin, who's already been mentioned in connection with lots. He's going to talk about lots of later time sharing. I'm a re relative latecomer to all of this. I didn't come to Stanford till 1970, but I was uh, lured to Stanford from, uh, by AI Lab alumni that I met uh, on the East Coast, a fellow named Bill Wickman, who had done an engineer's degree uh, in uh, accurately stacking blocks and using the video camera to, uh, to assess the correctness of those locations, and a fellow named John Sauter, uh, who was the systems programmer at the AI lab. <clears throat> well, I worked at the AI lab and uh, as a system programmer there till 1976 when some students, uh, uh, undergraduates, began to agitate for interactive computing. What a notion. Um, I was kind of hooked on the notion of interactive computing and that's why I lodged myself at the A AI lab. But uh, the students were uh, enjoying, I suppose I use that word loosely, uh, the pleasures of punched cards. Uh, having used punch cards for many years prior, <clears throat> uh, I was actually surprised that the system that the undergraduates were using was actually as responsive as it was. Uh, well, it wasn't interactive, but you could put your, the cards in the card reader yourself, not wait for the operator. <laughs> and. Uh, <clears throat> And you get your answer, you know, not uh, tomorrow, but uh, in five or ten minutes. Still, the uh, students thought that there was something better. Uh, I remember particularly a student, Steve Euler and David Rood, who were among the ringleaders proposing that undergraduates deserve something better. In 1976, digital equipment had brought forth the uh, DEC System 20, and it looked to me like uh, finally, timesharing was at an attractive price point. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> I suggested to the uh, uh, university that they ought to have me uh, run such a system. They're, they're too smart for that, you know, so uh, 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 having failed to do that, uh, <clears throat> John decided to uh, uh, run the uh, bureaucratic and uh, political uh, gantlet for me. Uh, establishing a, uh, what, a credible presence in the, with the administration so that in fact students could have time sharing and then he wisely, as other people have suggested, was a relatively hands-off manager. Let, let me uh, <clears throat> march into that swamp with, uh, with only a few people to help support me. Uh, low overhead didn't mean any particular virtue of the time sharing system. <clears throat> Uh, but uh, it meant, in fact, that uh, we were trying to serve about 2,000 undergraduates uh, with a uh, professional staff of uh, three, augmented by a lot of students. Well, <clears throat> that was uh, quite an experience in 1976. You'll remember that uh, this was a little bit before the personal computer had come upon the scene. And from 76 through uh, the mid-80s, uh, Time sharing was uh, the uh, way that students, undergraduate students, accessed uh, computers at Stanford. We taught them using SAIL, we taught them using Pascal. I suppose we taught them using Lisp as well. Uh, lots uh, morphed into the academic information resources, which still I think exists at Stanford in some manner or other. I believe it's part of the library at, in these days. And uh, uh, John, having uh, set this thing in motion uh, and uh, survived uh, it for a few years, uh, wisely exited the scene and le left uh, me uh, to uh, run that establishment. And I happily did that for a long time. It's easy to remember the curse of time sharing. Too many users. When every one of us now carries more computing in our pocket than was sent to the moon, it's inconceivable now that we should have to share uh, a computer. But interactive computing was more about just interaction. Interactive computing was about a community. And we built a community of now undergraduates at Stanford and our student users uh, went on to uh, uh, go on to Microsoft, to Next, Apple, Sun, and uh, they brought us the program we use today. 
the early days of, com of personal computers, the Macintosh and the PC, were a transient disruption of that community. All of a sudden, people turned into computer operators instead of uh, uh, people who enjoyed the products of the computer. But uh, that community was rebuilt with the internet and uh, on a much grander scale. We've already talked of, uh, of, uh, of the network and, uh, <clears throat> and, the, uh, and how it has evolved. With apologies to any Native Americans in the audience, this isn't my metaphor. You may have heard, you can tell the pioneers. They're the ones with the arrows in their back. It took me a while to understand what that meant. <laughs> Why, when you go into hostile territory, would you get, not get the arrows in your chest? I know this now. Machiavelli was an optimist. The arrows do not come from the people you face. The arrows come from the people behind you trying to hold you back. And John was never held back by anyone, and in fact, he encouraged so many people uh, to go forward in their own way. Thank you, John. Thank you. Actually, that was pretty close to on time.